Hi everyone, it's Maria here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to talk about sunscreen and I want to talk about my favorite products of sunscreen and also what would be best to combine if you are a makeup wearer. So I know these days that a lot of us are not wearing a lot of makeup. However, um, as the weather is kind of um, brightening up and the summer is here, it's really important to have a good sunscreen that can actually work well with makeup if you choose to wear it. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about my favorite Canadian SPF brands and how to do makeup to go along with that, then keep watching. All right, everyone, so let's get to it. So I want to talk about three different points today in combination with the um, SPF and also the makeup. So the first thing I want to talk about is my three favorite um, SPF products, and they are all Canadian. And who are they best for? Like what types of skins and um, maybe, you know, what kind of lifestyle would they suit? Number two, I want to talk about how much SPF to use because I find that specifically when it comes to the face, many people are not wearing an adequate amount of SPF. So maybe you're wearing it, but it might not be enough. And number three, I want to talk about the order of these products on your skin, the combination of the SPF and the makeup and how you can be protected adequately. Okay, so let's start with the dewiest of the sunscreens that I have. And this one would be the Helena Lane Sun Cream. Now, this product comes from Vancouver, BC. It is completely waterless and her products come in a puck uh, shape like this. And it gives you a nice kind of dense um, cream, which is an SPF of about 30. So this cream is beautiful, it's moisturizing, it's very rich. You need to take a little spatula to use the product. So always keep water out of the jar, especially with anything waterless. And it has about a 19% zinc oxide content, which is um, no nano. Now with the zinc oxide content, this offers you a UVA and UVB protection. So if this is a broad screen, a broad spectrum. <laughs> sunscreen um, and it gives you the, uh, that kind of full protection. So just make sure that when you're looking for a sunscreen that if it has the zinc oxide, it needs to be over 15%. And if the zinc oxide in your sunscreen, your mineral sunscreen is not at least 15%, have a look at the ingredients and see what else they're adding in there to boost that protection to a broad spectrum. Okay, so UVA and UVB. Um, you can find sunscreens definitely that have a lower zinc oxide content, but um, if they do that, it has to have a titanium dioxide or another one, maybe one of the conventional um, sunscreen ingredients to give you that full spectrum protection. Now I'm going to take a little bit, I'm going to show you how it melts into the skin. I'm not wearing um, any makeup and I just wanted to show you that even though it's quite rich, it really uh, melts nicely into the skin. Because it is waterless, you can definitely see that it gives me a bit more of a, you know, of a, of a shine or a dewiness, um, I guess you want to say. All right, but it's a beautiful product, comes in two scents, in the lavender lime and also the um, calendula and chamomile. Now, this SPF cream would be fantastic for someone who just wants a moisturizer and sunscreen all in one. So beautiful product. Keep it in your cabinet and apply it in the morning as your day cream. And voila, um, you're done. But just don't forget to reapply. OK, so I would probably say um, depending on how fast you burn, you would have to reapply within an hour. Um, now, the only challenge uh, I find with this product, as much as I love it, is that on super hot days, it's not a great product to have in your purse because the fact that it is in a pack and it is waterless makes it completely oil based and on really hot days it will melt in your bag if you take it to the beach um, or if you take it to another really hot space. Okay. That said, I do love the minimalist ingredients. It is made with shea butter, jojoba oil, which is infused with calendula and chamomile flowers. So fantastic for sensitive skin. You can also use it on your kids. And it also contains avocado oil, beeswax, and the zinc oxide, which is 19%. Now, the second one I want to talk about is the Cocoon Apothecary Reflector. This is an SPF 30, and it is also a broad spectrum sunscreen. Now, this one doesn't have quite the really the high uh, zinc oxide content that I was talking about before with Helena's product. This one here has 6% zinc oxide, but they're boosting the power of the zinc oxide into a full, bro, um, full sp spectrum protection with 9% titanium dioxide. So always check your ingredients 
ingredients, make sure that your sunscreen offers at least 15% of the zinc oxide. If not, what else have they added? And remember, it could be another ingredient, a conventional, a conventional sunscreen ingredient such as avobenzone, homosalate, um, etc. All right, now the reflector is a nice, um, more matte finish. I enjoy that, um, especially if you know that you're gonna get oilier throughout the day. So this would be fantastic for someone who does have skin that maybe produces a little bit more oil and is looking for a bit more of a matte finish. Okay, so it comes in a nice kind of easy to handle uh, glass pump comes out of the top here, um, neat little product. Now the formulation for this one is a little bit more um, dense. It doesn't have as the minimalist ingredients as Helena Lane's products do. Uh, Helena Lane is very is a, is a purist brand, so um, very, very small ingredient lists, but this one as well, the top ingredient um, in here is the shea butter, and then it has rice bran oil. Um, it has some other lovely ingredients like sea buckthorn and, um, Candelilla wax. So this one here actually would be vegan, whereas Helena Lane's is not. So it's important to make that distinction. Okay, so I'm going to apply the um, cocoon reflector on one side of my cheek so you can see how that blends in. Okay, and please ignore the amounts that I'm applying. I, uh, I'm just doing it so you can see the finish and how they, um, they melt into the skin. I am going to talk about uh, how much sunscreen you should be using on your skin. So you can see for with this one, it feels really nice, blends right in, but it is not as um, dewy as Helena Lane's. So just like the Cocoon Apothecary brand, the last one is an Ontario brand. This here is Consonant. It's a Toronto-based brand. They've been around for a long time and they make the perfect sunscreen. Now this one has done uh, really well for me since coming into the brick and mortar. And um, it's a fantastic product. I mean, it's also a little bit uh, better for anyone who doesn't want a lot of the um, that dewiness or an oily product. So fantastic for that. I'll show you how it goes on in a minute. This this one here uh, has 10% uh, zinc oxide for SPF ingredients and 6% titanium dioxide. So this one here gives you a uh, broad spectrum protection with 10% zinc oxide, 6% titanium dioxide. Um, what else? Okay, it, it's an SPF 30, okay? Just like the reflector and just like Helena Lane, I find that that is a good number to have on your face, but just remember that you are gonna have to reapply. So other than the SPF ingredients, this one here also contains jojoba seed oil and aloe vera extract. Now it goes on beautifully and I, I just want to show you that um, this one here actually has a beautiful like off-white tone. Now it's not a tinted sunscreen, it's not sold as that and that there are no um, different shades in it, right? So I was uh, looking through the ingredients to see what, what is it that makes it this beautiful kind of like um, off-white or flesh color and I found that it contains an iron oxide, so actually a black iron oxide. So I believe that that makes it look off-white. My other sunscreens do not contain that and that's why they're, you know, your usual pure white, um, what you're used to seeing in a mineral sunscreen. Now I want to show you this one, how beautifully it blends into the skin and just the fact that it's not, you know, completely white, although the other ones just melt into the skin beautifully, right? It just kind of disappears, all right? Also unscented, cruelty-free, so this product also, um, you know, goes on a little bit more matte, but definitely the skin does not feel dry um, with either one. Okay, so Helena's, of course, is still a little bit dewy um, to the touch, but it makes a beautiful base for makeup, um, especially if you are looking for that um, beautiful dewiness. But these ones here too, the Cocoon, on this side and the Consonant, um, they just go on and they still, you know, your skin still feels, feels plump and um, hydrated. Okay, so now that we talked about the different options that I love and are tried and true, let's talk about how much you need. What really concerns me is that when people try to take shortcuts with their SPF, they try to use a product that will do everything. So it's your makeup product, it's your SPF, it's your moisturizer. However, I feel that when you do that, you're not using enough product. So the websites that I've researched on the amounts of sunscreen that should go on your face, 
um, say that the number, I guess, is from anywhere from quarter of a teaspoon to half a teaspoon. Now, about an ounce or a shot full of sunscreen is um, recommended for an adult's um, face, body, arms, legs. I think that also can be less or more, I guess, depending on, you know, how tall you are, how heavy you are, how much more you have to cover. So definitely take that into consideration. But I think what a, a good point here is to uh, be able to apply the sunscreen and be able to see it when you apply it. Then you kind of blend it in and smooth it out into a flawless finish, especially when it's on your face. Um, some different sites that I've read, um, again, credible sources have recommended about a quarter, um, so a quarter to half a teaspoon of um, sunscreen on your face. So I wanna show you that if you were to use uh, a tinted moisturizer, let's say there was a product, um, there's a product out there you love and it has an SPF 30. I think that most women would, would, you know, take a little bit of the product and they would kind of go like this, they would go like this or something and then blend it in. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but I think most people would not use enough. So I'm going to do a little demonstration for you to show you how much is a quarter of a teaspoon. So I'm going to fill this up with the tinted moisturizer. So this is the Pure Anata tinted moisturizer. It doesn't contain SPF, but I'm just doing it so you can see. So let's say that this is about a quarter of a teaspoon. <laughs> I'm not done. So do you see, this is even quarter of a teaspoon, like that is a lot of makeup. And this is kind of what, what concerns me when most people don't use that much. Um, even if you're using an SPF 50, you're using a 30, um, it doesn't matter because the point is that you're not putting enough on. So you need to cover your face, you need to cover your ears. Um, you need to bring this makeup product that you like to use as a faster way to apply sunscreen and makeup in one, it needs to cover your face, your ears, and there needs to be enough of it on so that when you apply it, you can see it. Okay, so the point here is just use enough. And you can tell that with all the sunscreens I put on, skin looks great, okay? So let's get to the order because now you've noticed that I had the sunscreen on and then I went and put my foundation or my tinted moisturizer on top of that. All right, so what order should these products go on? Well, ideally, you shouldn't be putting anything on top of your SPF. So Health Canada approves the products for SPF without anything else on the skin. So to do the job and to get the SPF 30, your sunscreen needs to be on the skin on its own. And when you start adding other products on top, you are diluting or kind of messing up that SPF designation, all right? So um, if you are a minimalist and you are boycotting the makeup or you've never worn any makeup, um, you know, in terms of a foundation or a tinted moisturizer, then great, just apply your product, apply your SPF, and then you're done. Just don't forget that within an hour, 40 to 45 minutes, you're gonna need to reapply that uh, facial SPF, whichever one it is that you chose. Now, if you are a makeup wearer, you're gonna do what I did here, okay? Which means you're gonna go apply your moisturizer, your SPF, you're gonna put it on as a base, and then you're gonna proceed with your base product, your tinted base product. Now, if you do that and you go about your day, you'll be okay maybe for the first little bit. But what happens after that when you need to reapply, right? Um, at some point during the day, and if you are outside, whether you're wearing makeup or not, you have to reapply that SPF product. So perhaps something that has a nice little tint, like the Consonant uh, Perfect Sunscreen, might be a great option. Or you might choose one of Helena Lane's tinted um, SPF products. This is the Glow One, which is great if you have um, fair to light skin tone. It gives you a beautiful glow and also protects you with an SPF 30 that comes from zinc oxide. And she also has the Bronze Two, which is a beautiful shade that gives you a really nice glow if you are, again, um, light to a medium skin tone. So this type of product 
takes care of the base of your skin, you know, in terms of color, and it also gives you the SPF protection. Now, remember the demo I did and the quarter teaspoon and just make sure that you use enough. At some point during your day, you're going to have to decide if it's the makeup or if it's the sunscreen that you're, you know, you needs to be a priority here. And obviously, I think for signs of aging, to protect your skin against cancer and the harmful um, rays of the sun, definitely the sunscreen wins, comes out on top. It has to be worn on top. Now, I want to give you another little tip um, for the face. A lot of people ask me, well, you no, know, Maria, is the SPF 30 enough? So the ones that I carry in my shop are all SPF 30 for the face. Um, you know, you might be thinking, well, if I went for a 50 or an 80 or 100, I would just put it on my skin once in the morning and I would be set for the day, right? So actually, that's not true. You should be wearing on your face at least a 30 and that is actually good enough, all right? It's it's a good number and I'll tell you why. So an SPF 15 filters out 93% of the sun's rays, right? That is pretty good, isn't it? And that is the 15. An SPF 30 filters out 97% of the sun's rays. Isn't that amazing? And that's the 30. And if you go up to a 50, it's actually just 98%. And if you go to 100 SPF, that's 99%. So the difference is actually so small that um, I think if you're wearing an SPF with a bigger number, it actually gives you like a false sense of security. You think that you have to wear less and maybe you're not going to reapply as often, which actually leaves you more vulnerable to the sun's harmful rays. So I'd say just choose a good SPF 30 product, something that you like, something that blends into your skin, something that you, um, you know, enjoy wearing because the most important part of the SPF is you having it on. So I'm going to link all the products that I use today down below. If you have any questions, please drop me a line. I always w welcome your questions and your comments. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and hit the little notification bell so you get notified the next time I post in the next video. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.